Jesus, when he came forth, he spoke in parables. A parable is saying something in one way, but you're saying something else. You that got children and stuff, you know, when mom and dad is talking, you kind of talk around certain things when you want to talk about certain things. And mom knows what you're talking about and dad knows what you're talking about. And you guys give you guys that little wink and stuff. And you know what's going to happen. Praise God. They don't, but the kid don't even know. And you can use all kinds of little parables and metaphors and stuff. And the kid is just there. <laughs> don't have a clue to what's going on. So it is in the kingdom of God. Most of the people in the kingdom of God are still babies. They want to stay there and they don't have a clue to what Father God, Mother God is saying. They have no clue to what is taking place. And so Jesus came and he spoke in parables. And the Greek word for parable, it means dark sayings. It means wayside, to deviate from the meaning. And I'm going to tell you seven reasons why he did that. And it's going to be very powerful. And if you can understand this and grasp this, this is going to open up a whole new level of understanding and revelation for you when you read the word of God. Now, there are 46 parables that Jesus spoke about the kingdom of heaven. Somebody say 46. 46. Now, you know how I, I think. You guys know where I'm going with that. The human body has 46 chromosomes in it. So each parable represents a chromosome. I'm going to probably, when I finally get time, I will assign the parables to the chromosomes because it's very powerful when you understand you and you understand that you're just a parable. You're just a parable. You're just a shadow of what, it, what really is. You don't really know who you are. We don't really know who we are yet. We have some ideas. The Bible says it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Not as he was, but as he is. And so you're in that place where you're learning how to see the appearance of Christ in you and each other. And the more those scales fall from your eyes... That was very prophetic the way that God set this up this morning because the message is going right there with the vision and stuff. You know? The more the scales fall from your eyes, the more you see of him. Now, the more you see of him, the less that there can be of you because I must decrease and he must increase. Amen. Hallelujah. And so we have the 46 parables of the kingdom of heaven because you are a parable and it represents the, the body of man put together to express the kingdom of God. You were born at such a time as this to express God's kingdom and to manifest his kingdom on the earth. Thy will be done. Thy kingdom come. God's kingdom coming forth within you. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. But way, way, way beyond that, something we won't really get into this morning. And he gave us 46 of those because he's building his temple. He's building his temple. It takes 46 chromosomes to build the human temple. He's building his temple. Now, Matthew chapter 13 explains this. And I'm going to just quickly go through this in Matthew 13. You don't have to really uh, go there if you, don't, if you don't want to. But Matthew 13 is the most important parable in the Bible that Jesus spoke. It is the most important. Matter of fact, Jesus said it's so important in uh, I think Mark 4, 13 or somewhere around there. He said it's so important that if you don't understand this parable, you will never be able to understand all the other parables. And that's what Jesus said. He says, if you don't get this one, you won't get the other ones. Because this is the key to unlocking the parables and the mysteries of the kingdom of God. And this is just a simple parable that we think of the seed and the sower and the seed. While Jesus is out there preaching, he sees this guy out sowing seed. And so he starts to preach a message about that, you know. OK. And uh, but it is, it is so powerful now. And the disciples ask Jesus a very, very important question. Now, uh, before we get to that question, uh, parables are. Let's just get to the question. He, uh, verse 10 of chapter 13, it says, And the disciples came to him and says, Why do you speak to them in parables? See, because he had just finished multiplying fish and loaves and all of these wonderful miracles that he had done. And so, and he spoke to them in parables. Why? Because he knew that they were only interested in the fish and loaves. Only how you can bless me, what you can do for me, and what I can get. Jesus Santa Claus. Amen. That's what they were interested in. And so 
And then there was like these 70 others that he had anointed and stuff. These guys were more so interested in, you know, I want to be the top star evangelist, top, top star apostle or prophet and things like that, you know. They didn't even hear the mysteries of the kingdom. Although they had the power, they were demonstrating, they were casting out devils. They came back and said, look, 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 I cast out so many devils. And he says, don't rejoice because the, you know, the devil's cast out. Rejoice because your name is in heaven. Okay? And then there were the 12 there. Amen. There were the 12 there. And one of them was a devil. I know that Jesus traveled with a devil. That's what the Bible says. Okay. And matter of fact, he even called Peter Satan at one time. You need a Satan in your ministry. You need the devil. Judas was necessary. And I'm not going to get into that. I want to. I'll just touch on a little bit. I'm going to pray for Judas for this ministry. <laughs> See? <laughs> See, Judas was from... I'm, 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 sent to re I'm going to just redeem Judas, okay? Because he's been put in such a bad light. He's been mistreated, misunderstood. Poor Judas. I feel sorry for Judas. Amen. Okay, Judas means praise of Yahweh, all right? And so how many know that Joseph had a brother named Judas? Okay, we won't go there. But now... Just a quick little side note. Judas was of Iscariot. What is Iscariot? There was a town where they traded. He was a businessman. He knew how to trade the anointing. He knew how to generate wealth for the church, for the kingdom of God. Tell the person next to you, say, we need some Judases in here. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? He understood that principle. I won't get into that. I'll say that maybe next time I'll come or something like that, you know. <laughs> but, but anyway, he understood that principle. And the whole thing with him betraying Christ and stuff, it was all to get money for the church because he didn't expect them to actually take him. Because he had seen it many times happen. They come for him and Jesus just go right between them. You know, he, had, you know, he had disappeared or, you know, stuff like that. So he didn't expect them to actually get him. He was ripping off the system for the church. <laughs> Somebody pause and think about that. Okay, we, we won't go further with that. But anyway, uh, parables. <laughs> he says, why are you speaking to, to them in parables? And Jesus said this, because unto you, this is Peter, James, and John, the inner circle. Unto you, it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom. Unto you, you have been called out, a church out of a church, a people out of a people. That's why you came to a place in your spirit, and some of you that may be watching, you just don't fit in in religion anymore. It's not that you don't fit in in church, and sometimes we, 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 we misspeak that, oh, I don't like church anymore, I don't, you know. It's not church that you don't like, it's, it's the religion because Jesus Christ has been misrepresented by the church. And so you're fed up with that, and so what you need to do is just get out of the system. But God has a church, a called out ones, which is not a building, but it is people that are gathered together, that are drawn upon that anointing so that they can manifest him. Okay. And so, um, praise God for that. So he says, unto you it is given to know the mysteries. And so that's why you were here. That's why uh, uh, you went through what you went through in some of the places where you were. That's why some of you were beat up by shepherds kicked around and abused and ripped off, manipulated and all that stuff, living on the fear and legalism, God was trying to get you out. Somebody say, get out. get out. Yes, thank God that you guys are into a place where you're free. Now, okay, so he says, unto you it is given to another mistress of the kingdom. So number one, parables are given so that uh, the truth can be revealed. It is to create interest. To create interest because most people they don't have a interest in the things of God because of the natural mind that is totally opposed to the spiritual things and it's confusing is it's foolishness for people to gather together to jump around and do all the stuff that we were doing here this morning what are these people doing this is life for us Amen. we're having fun Amen. we're being infused with the life of God we're being empowered when we come here we leave out of here a different way. We're being changed from glory to glory to glory. Okay. And so, but so parables create that interest. Number two, it is to make known new truth. Parables are given so that people, so that we can search out and find new truth. It is not new to God. It's not like quote unquote new age, but it is new truth, new to you, something that God is revealing right now. 
rhema word, okay? Number three, parables are given to make known the mysteries by comparing something with something that you already know. So the people knew about farming there in that uh, community. So he says the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man sowing seeds. He went to where women were cooking and baking and stuff. And then he did another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a woman kneading bread. He went out there by the, by the lake where they were fishing. The kingdom of heaven is like a man that's out there fishing and he throws a net. Then he goes by where the business people are and the bankers and stuff. The kingdom of heaven is like a, you know, one, that, a, a, one that's using a, a treasurer and a, a steward that, that, that hires people and things like that. So he went to wherever people were and he made a parable showing them what the kingdom of heaven was like and unto. Using something that they could identify with. And so the Holy Spirit uses something that you can identify with to bring you to your next level of revelation and understanding. Hallelujah. Now, the thing is, you do not want to limit yourself or other people. Just because somebody does not see what you see, it's okay. They don't come from your background, maybe. They didn't have the experiences that you had. And so God is only using something from their frame of reference to show them something. Okay? So, now, number four. Parables are used... <clears throat> To conceal truth from those who are not interested and rebellious at heart. That's Matthew 13, uh, verses 13 to 15. Jesus says uh, this. He says, therefore speak I unto you, unto them, unto them in parables. Because seeing, they don't really want to see. Hearing, they don't really want to hear. They just want some religious, you know, fluff or something. Tell me something I already know. Don't make me think about anything. Just give me the ABCs a million times, you know, and still get it wrong. And in them... And in them is fulfilled the prophecy, which is which says, "By hearing you shall hear, and uh, by hearing you shall hear and shall not understand, and seeing you shall see and not perceive." For the hearts of these people are gross. So it depends on your heart, just like the four soils, the four uh, uh, levels of the parable. There, there are some that are wayside people. Somebody say wayside. wayside. Okay. There are some that are sunburned. Come on, somebody say sunburned. Okay, because they didn't get, you know, covered up and everything. And so, and the, sea, the sun rose up and they got burned, you know. Persecution and stuff came, they got burned. Those by the wayside or those that just, you know, they got excited for a little bit, but they just kind of like fell by the wayside. They went, you know, back to the world. They got, you know, they, they got a little touch, maybe got a little healing or something. Okay, now I got what I want, so I'm going to go back. All right. And then there are those that are choked out. Somebody say choked out. I've never met choked out Christians. <laughs> you know, those are the ones that allow the cares of this life to choke out the life of Christ within them and the mysteries of God, the kingdom of God. They allow their eyes to get dollar signs instead of, you know, looking to seeking God first. And then there are those that are the good ground, those that's going to receive. Okay, so those are the four stages here. And so, but he's saying that it depends on your heart. Your heart. Where is your heart? What are you seeking for? We yet get into this message, but I'm giving you this so that you can understand the, the depthness of this parable. Uh, number five, uh, he spoke in parables to add truth for those who love it. How many love truth? Okay, you find that in Matthew 13, 12. He says to those that have, it shall be given to them even more. So if you love truth, you're going to be given more truth. But we live in an age now where people rather to be lied to. You know, and they enjoy being lied to and they want to be lied to every day. You can prove it right in front of their face and they still won't see it. It can be about spiritual things, political things, economic. It could be about anything. Some people just can't handle the truth. You know, that is, that is actually a mental illness. It's called veritophobia. That means people that are afraid of the truth. Some of you got relatives like that. <laughs> <laughs> Live in the house with somebody like that, you know. You can tell them, you know, and they still, they won't admit it. They are afraid of the truth. They just cannot admit it. That is a mental illness. Get fixed. Get healed. <laughs> David says, I desire truth in the inward part. Even if it conflicts with my ideology, my theology, or whatever, desire truth and truth will be added to you. And then also, uh, he spoke in parables so that the truth that they had would be taken from them. Hmm. That's what Matthew 13 and 12 also says, that those that have little, in other words, those that have little and are not increasing, that what you have would be taken away. It's not that God comes down and just takes it away. He doesn't give a gift and take it away. The gifts and callings are without repentance. But what is happening? You will use it. You will lose it if you don't lose it. 
It would no longer be relevant. It would no longer be life to you. So you must constantly be feeding yourself with the spiritual things of God, your mind, not just when you're in a meeting like this, that we come to the School of Prophets or your regular church services or anything, but you got to constantly be feeding your mind so that God can add more. And uh, number seven, it is to fulfill prophecy. Parables are given to fulfill prophecy. And uh, verses 17 through 17 and 35, it says this, Verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see the things what you are seen in this time. Yeah. Do you realize how fortunate you are? I would say over 95% of the churches in this country on today would not be open to the stuff that you hear in this house. It would be classed as false doctrine, heresy, new age, what is this, demonic, and all kinds of crazy stuff. Because they don't desire truth. They desire to be lied to. Okay, And so he says, for many people have desired to see these things which you are seeing and don't see.